Hi, welcome to this video where I'm going to talk about project management in relation to business analytics projects. Uh, but many of these comments will equally apply to, to all sites of all types of consultancy projects. Okay, so uh, if you think about most projects, what you'll tend to find is they go through roughly three stages. Um, and we call those stages the inception phase, uh, the analysis phase and the outputs phase. So what I'm going to do in this, this video is just have a look at all three of those uh, stages and give you some sort of help and, and advice on, on how to manage each of those three stages. So the inception phase um, for a business analytics project, but it's really the same for any type of, of consulting project, um, it's really uh, where you you um, get the project going. Uh, now, normally what happens is you have a meeting with a client. Um, now, that meeting might be with an individual, uh, client contact, or it might be with a group of people. So, for example, if you're doing a big consultancy project, there's often what's called a steering group, uh, and there'll be a group of perhaps half a dozen uh, people from the organization whose job it is to oversee the project and, and this will certainly be the case if, if it's a big project which is costing a lot of money or, or, or is, is like to have a big impact on the organization. Uh, as part of that phase uh, there would be a meeting where clearly everybody talks about the project and, and the client tries to give you sort of uh, direction about where the project might be going. Now, if, if it's a commercial consultancy project, it's quite possible that there, um, prior to that meeting, there might have been um, some kind of uh, tendering process. So, for example, I used to work in commercial consultancy, and most of the projects we got would be advertised, uh, and we would have to put a proposal together and do a presentation, and then the organisation would choose the company that they want. And so as part of that process, there will have been certain things agreed about what, what the, pro, uh, the project will be. Uh, but even so, when you get actually get to, to sit down and, and, and do the project, there'll be a slight renegotiation uh, of the project because uh, often the, the client contact is, is perhaps not the same person that was involved in, in the selection of the consultancy firm. So... There'll be some degree of problem situation structuring and, and that will be <clears throat> really about uh, the project team and the client team trying to agree exactly what's going to happen in the project. Um, so things like problem definition, there'll be uh, some kind of timetable agreed, um, there'll be some kind of project design agreed uh, and of course you know for, for many projects that there are different ways of doing things um, and the client organization may have um, particular preferences so for example they might prefer a particular type of software to be used like Excel or, or R or Python um, they might want you to use certain types of data um, they might need you to collect some data as well so um, there'll be some kind of a, a discussion obviously um, as an analyst myself, it's it's really, really fantastic if the organization has some internal expertise relating to analytics, um, because then at least you can talk to them um, sort of, you know, uh, in, in a very equal way about exactly what's going to happen. But many organizations don't have uh, experience with analytics. And so, it you know, that they, they'll be relying on the consultants to actually provide that advice on on how to do certain things so um, in summary the, inse the inception phase uh, resolves around uh, a client meeting to establish the scope of the project um, there will be problem situation structuring which might include something like rich picture drawing uh, which is, I think is a great way to start any kind of project uh, if you're not familiar with rich picturing have a look on YouTube. I've got a, a couple of videos about rich picturing, uh, but that's you know whatever type of project you're doing, whether it's a, 
a strategy project or an analytics project or, or any type of project, uh, I think it's great to start with some rich picturing. You also need to do some stakeholder analysis um, so you understand you know, who are the key players in the organization um, so that you're aware of, of their perspectives and, and what they think are important in relation to the project. Um, but also uh, thinking about the people on your project team as well. That's also important to understand you know, who those people are. And also uh, we need to do uh, uh, an analysis of issues and risks. So obviously projects are notoriously problematic. Um, it's, it's not unusual for uh, projects to have problems. Uh, often, uh, you know, that those risks can be assessed early on um, just to make sure that you're aware of them and, and to, to develop some kind of mitigation in case those, those uh, risks become apparent. Now, the analysis phase really is the phase where you actually do the thing that you're being paid to do. So that might be analytics, it might be implementing an IT system, it might be sort of helping the organization with some kind of organizational change. So whatever it is that you're there to do, the analysis phase is the bit where you do it. So I think, you know, as an analyst myself, um, this is the bit that I that I enjoy. You know, this 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 is the bit where I get to be an analyst, which is the bit that I enjoy. The, the, you know, and this is you know what I've been trained to do myself. Uh, so you might use tools like the business model canvas, for example, if you're looking at the business model of the organisation. You you know you might be building and using quantitative methods uh, if if it's more of an analytics and a data driven project. Um, you know, often um, the analysts will will choose which tools and techniques they're going to use. It might be that you've been hired because you're regarded as being an expert with a particular type of tool. Um, so, for example, you know, I, I have friends who are practitioners and they work for simulation uh, companies. So everything they do is simulation. So it's possible that you've been brought in because you are an expert in something like simulation. Um, or it might be you're more of a general purpose analyst. And so, you know, you, you will then choose uh, which analytics you're going to do. Uh, and you might be using a, a fairly generic piece of software like Excel, uh, but you've still got to decide, you know, what you're actually going to do. And, and, and that can be quite a stressful bit of an assignment you know um, or, or a project you know um, often you know part of the project is is collecting data and, and often when you actually look at an organization's data that sometimes will determine which tools you can use because they might not have a great set of data uh, they might be short of uh, the data that you wanted and so you might you might have to sort of bend your approach um, a bit to 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 work with the data they have. So, for example, we did a lot of work in in Northern Ireland in the nineteen nineties and early noughties, um, where we were doing geo demographic analyses. Uh, and and in those days, th there just wasn't uh, digital data about geo demographics uh, in the in the United Kingdom. So we couldn't do. Uh, the sorts of analysis that we could do now when it's actually readily available. It's very easy now to, to download uh, data on uh, demographics and, and, and things like drive times and things like that, that they're, they're readily available, uh, but they weren't then. So, you know, data availability is going to be a big part of this as well. Now, the outputs phase is where you essentially report back to the client uh, to tell them what you've done and, and what your findings are. Uh, now, um, I think the outputs phase is a, a very interesting phase for people like myself who are analysts because probably this isn't our strong suit. Um, you know, uh, analysts love love to do analytics. That that's what we like to do. We love to analyze things. 
were, were generally not great at presentations and, and writing reports. Uh, I don't think anybody likes writing reports. Uh, however, the outputs phase of a project is really, really important because if you don't communicate what you've done successfully, then you might find that your project is a failure, even though the analysis was really good. Um, so at the end of the day, you, you need to remember that managers will not automatically assume that you are correct and that you've done a good project. Um, they will make up their own mind about that. Um, and that's their job, you know, that's the job of, of a good manager to, to make those sorts of decisions. So when you do your presentation, when you write your report, the manager will be looking at that thinking, hmm, you know, do I have confidence in this piece of work? Can I rely on this analysis? Because, of course, they, they, they weren't there when the analysis was done. They don't know uh, if it's good analysis. They're not the experts. So um, they're relying on you to be able to communicate back to them um, and convince them that, yes, it, it was a good piece of work. The, the, the findings are reliable. And, yes, you can implement uh, the findings that we are presenting. And uh, you need to remember as well that quite often when you actually stand up to give a presentation at the end of a project, stakeholders from the organisation will come to that presentation who have not been involved in the project at all. Uh, and so they don't know, they don't know you, they, they, they've not been involved in the project, they've not seen anything that you've done on the project. So they will make their mind up about the quality and the reliability of the analysis based upon your performance in the presentation and in the report. So it's really, really important to, to be able to stand up and um, convince the clients and the stakeholders that it, it, you know, it was a good project. Um, now, you know, obviously, uh, the important thing, therefore, is, is to make sure that, that um, they can understand what you're saying. You know, it's, it's very difficult for anybody to 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 really come up with a very positive view of a project if they really don't know what you're saying. Um, so also it's important to remember that these days more and more at the end of a, an analytics project we will also hand over the spreadsheets uh, as well. So uh, in the old days we we wouldn't do that uh, but but nowadays because um uh, Excel is is so very presentable, and and most organisations are very comfortable with things like Excel. They would expect us to hand over our spreadsheets as well, so they can use them going forwards. Uh, so we need to remember when we're building our spreadsheets that they need to be designed in such a way that they're um, understandable by other people. Uh, because if we build our spreadsheets in such a way that only we can understand them then it's going to be very, very difficult and, and the client's not going to be very happy about that. Um, so spreadsheets, presentations and reports, it's all about making sure that, that the client uh, can understand them. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say in this video. Uh, just to give you a few hints and tips. Um, I think that the main thing to remember is that all of these phases are important. You know, you can't just be good at one of them or two of them. You need to be good at all three, okay? Because if you don't do the inception phase right, then uh, you won't have designed the project properly and you won't have agreed with the client uh, exactly what you should be doing. Okay, so there's a chance there that you'll be slightly doing the wrong thing or the client won't be happy um, and if you make a bad impression right at the beginning of the project, then it's kind of difficult to get that back uh, as you go through the project because all of the time the client will be looking towards you to say, thinking, you know, can I trust this person? And, and the analysis phase obviously is important because if you don't do good analysis, then of course, you, you know, you're, you're not going to be providing good value to the client. And then the outputs phase is important because if you don't 
communicate well what you've done, there's a danger that the, the, the organization will, will look at your project and say, mm, I'm not quite sure if we really trust you know, this project. I'm not quite sure if, if, if we're willing to take these recommendations forwards. Okay, so really important to focus on all three of these stages. Okay, thanks a lot.